Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem best team with no conflicts. Before we start, I will say that this is very similar to the problem longest increasing subsequence, which we've solved on this channel. This problem is actually even harder than that problem. So if you struggle with this one, I definitely recommend checking out that explanation. I think it's one of my better explanation videos, but the context is that we're trying to maximize a score. We're given two arrays. One is the score scores array and one is the ages array and we want to maximize the sum of scores but there's a restriction on which scores we can pick in the longest increasing subsequence problem that restriction is that we have to choose values in an increasing order we're given an array and we can only choose values that are in an increasing order so maybe these two values would be an increasing order well with this problem it's slightly different and it's more difficult because there's actually two conditions that we have to check for. One is that if we have two scores, such as five and 15, these are our scores, we can only choose both of these scores if the age of the player with the larger score is greater than or equal to the age of the player with the smaller score. In other words, we have a contradiction. We can't include both of these scores if a player that is younger has a higher score than a player that is older. I know that's pretty confusing, which is probably what makes this problem hard, that this isn't like a straightforward condition. It's hard to kind of wrap your mind around it. And it turns out that the time complexity to solve this problem the way I'm going to do it is going to be n squared, which is hinting that sorting the arrays is going to be pretty necessary necessary and is going to make our life a lot easier. So let's sort the scores array. That's how I'm going to handle it. But you could sort based on the age as well, but I'm going to uh, sort based on scores. And in this case, the scores are already sorted for us. So this makes it easier because now we don't have to compare every pair of values with each other. We don't have to compare this one with this guy and this guy with this guy. We are already going in increasing order. We already know our scores are going to be in increasing order. So now the only thing we have to check is every time we add a new value. So suppose we're here and we're trying to add this next value. The only thing we have to check is that this player with a higher score does not have an age that is lower than the player with a lower score. That's the only thing we have to check. One way to solve this problem is to do it recursively. We can try to generate every single combination of scores, every combination of valid scores, and see which one leads to the maximum. So recursively, we would go through every value. So for one, we would choose to include one or not include one. We'd skip it. And then here we would choose to either include three or not include three, skip it. Now, in some cases, we won't be able to include a value at all if we don't satisfy that age condition, like the ages are not in increasing order because we already know our scores are. So therefore, our ages should also be in increasing order. If they're not, then we have a contradiction. Doing it this way will generate every possibility and we'll be able to maximize the result. This though is gonna be two to the power of n in terms of big O time complexity, though the way you can code this up, you can call a DFS where we have two parameters. One parameter is i, that's gonna tell us what index we're currently at. We'll have a second parameter j though, which is gonna tell us what is the largest age of a player we have seen so far? In other words, this J is going to point at the pair of values, the pair of score age values that tells us what is the max age we have seen so far. The reason this is necessary is because we don't want to check when we're here at 10. Yes, we know that the scores are sorted. So when we're at 10, for example, we know that 10 is going to be greater than or equal to all the previous scores. But we don't know the same thing about the ages. The ages could be completely random. This could have an age of seven. This could have an age of three. This could have an age of four. So from here, we don't want to iterate through every previous value. So we just save the max age we have seen so far. This saves us some work. And not only that, but this allows us to do DP, dynamic programming, because we have two parameters, I and J. We can implement caching on these two parameters. What is the total number of combinations for I and J that we could pass in? Well, since each of them is just going to be an index for the input array, each one could have a possible value of N. So we have N times N. That's the total number of combinations we could pass into that 
recursive function. So the time complexity would be n squared. Let me quickly show you the code for that, but then we're gonna get to the true dynamic programming solution because for some reason, this recursive solution does not pass on leak code, at least when you're using the Python language. So very quickly, this is the recursive dynamic programming solution. Maybe I have a bug or something, but at least for me, this is not passing on leak code. You can see this is one of the base cases where we go out of bounds of the array, then we return zero. This is our caching case where we've already, this is our cache hit case where we have already seen this value before, then we can return it immediately. Otherwise, we will have to calculate the score. We have two cases. We can either add the current score or skip the current score. But remember, we can only add the current score if the current age is less than the max age that we have seen so far. I think this condition is actually not necessary since we sorted our pairs based on the score. We created a array of pairs where the first value in the pair is score and the second value is the age and we sorted it like that. So I'm pretty sure this is actually not necessary, but this does not pass on leak code for me at least. I'm also going to add the ages, but I'm going to switch this up slightly to make this more interesting because in this example, we're just adding all of the scores, but I want to make this a bit more interesting. So let's give this an uh, age of five. Let's give this one an age of three. Building upon our caching solution, and this is the part where you might need to have a good understanding of the longest increasing subsequence problem, but the idea is this. For every score, let's try to find the maximum possible score that we can have if this guy was our max score. So if one was our max score, what is the possible maximum score that we could have given these conditions? Well, in this case, it would probably just be one because we can't add any more scores. This is the smallest one. And we're assuming that this is the largest score. Moving to the next position, what is the maximum score we could have if three was our maximum score? Well, we can't, again, iterate through any values to the right, but we can start all the way at the left over here and try to find the maximum. Well, for this value, we have to check, does it have an age that is less than or equal to the age of three. That's important because if it's not the case, then we're not allowed to add this value to three. But in this case, it is. So what we say is the maximum possible score we could have if three was our maximum score, like the maximum total sum score we could have if three was our maximum score would be four because we can add these two together. There's no contradiction here. And not only that, we're gonna actually put that four here now. So we're gonna put a four value over here. This is so that we don't have to do additional repeated work because that was the idea behind caching and this is a similar idea behind dynamic programming. So now you're gonna see why this is useful in this next position five, we wanna know what's the maximum total score we could have if five was our maximum score. So let's iterate through all values to the left of it because we of course can't add these guys, they're bigger than it. So we look at one, does one have a smaller score than five? Yes, it does. So the maximum so far we have found is five plus one. So we would put that here, which is six. Then we're gonna go over here at four. Does the value here have an age that's smaller than the age of six? Yes, two is less than five. So now we found a new maximum, four plus six. So we would put 10 in this position. Notice how from here, we already knew that if we were able to create four, then we only added values from the left of it that had a smaller age than the value here. So if the age of this is smaller than five, of course, all of the ages from here that we added to this position were also less. So that's why we're allowed to do this. This is where the repeated work comes in handy. Now, next in this position, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna look at the left, see one. It has an age of one, that's less than 10. We add these two together, that gives us 11. So that's our max so far. Then we do the same thing over here. Four has an age of two, that's less than four. So we have four plus 10. That's a new maximum of 14. Now, finally, we get to the last value here. It has a value of 10, that's really big. But the problem here is that five does not have an age that is smaller than four. So we can't add it to 10. So we say our maximum so far is 14, and that's the maximum we can get with a max value of 10. And then finally we get to 15. We're gonna do the same thing, one plus 15, we're allowed to do that. So we'd have 16, we'll have four plus 
15. We're allowed to do that because two is less than three. So now our maximum so far is 19, but these guys have an age that is larger than three so we can't add them here unfortunately so we say our max score if our max score was 15 our max total score would be 19 and these are all the possible result cases so we just take the maximum of all these five which is 19 and that's going to be our result that we return notice how we just had two nested for loops to iterate through this array so that means the time complexity is big O of N squared. The memory complexity is big O of N. We didn't even have to create a two-dimensional matrix or anything like that. So now let's code it up. So to save us a bit of time, I'm just gonna copy and paste a few lines. One we're doing is creating that list of pairs. Since we know the scores and ages arrays are of the same length, we are creating a pair where the first value is the score, the second value is the age, and we'll have a list of each pair. And then we're gonna sort the pairs. By default, this is gonna sort based on the first key value. So this is gonna sort based on the scores. If there's a tie, it's gonna sort based on the ages, but that's not really important in this case. So we know our scores are gonna be in ascending order. That's what's important. Our DP array is going to just be initialized with the scores since we know the first value in that pair is the score. So just like in the drawing that I showed, we'll have the scores sorted in ascending order in our DP array. Then we're gonna have a couple nested for loops. We know our I pointer is gonna be the first pointer. We're going to iterate through every single position in pairs. So we're considering if this was the maximum value, the value at index I, what's the max total score we could get? So we can only iterate through values to the left of it. So we're gonna have a J pointer and it's gonna go from zero all the way up until I. And the easiest way to do that in Python is just like this. So for J in range up until I. Now, before I even do that, I'm gonna create a couple variables. This isn't necessary, but I think it makes it more readable, at least for me. Remember, we're considering if this was the max score. So I'm gonna say pairs at index I is gonna give us these two variables, max score and the age of that max score, which I'm just gonna call max age, even though it's not really the max age. And then we're for every J value, for every value to the left of I, we need to check that the condition is satisfied. Since we know the pairs are already sorted in ascending order, we don't have to check that the scores are in ascending order, but we do have to check that the age at index J, which let's put those in a couple of variables as well, score and age, we can get with pairs at index J. If the age of the person with the higher score is greater than or equal to the age of the person with the lower or equal score, then we know we are allowed to add the value. So what we say is dp at index i, because that's ultimately what we're trying to determine, what's the max total score we could have with this max score, is gonna be the max of itself, just like I showed in the drawing, or possibly the max score, plus the dp value that we have stored at index j, which is the max score we could have where this is the maximum score. And we have made sure that the age condition is satisfied, though if the age condition was not satisfied, then we would just skip it. We don't have to do anything here. We don't need an else condition here because we're not gonna do anything in that case. But when all of this is over, we know our DP array will have all the possible result candidates. We just have to return the maximum from those candidates and then we're good to go. So let's run this code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.